Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Barbecue Bourbon and Business Podcast Show. My name is Helena, and joining me is my very good friend and business partner, Luke. Hi, Luke. Hi, guys. Welcome. Please grab a a drink, sit back, relax. I hope we're going to have a lot of fun. (laughs) Thank you for joining us. So building a business should be fun. So in between sampling some good bourbon and sharing a few backyard barbecue tips, we will be sharing practical, no-nonsense strategies to help stop trading to help you stop trading time for money turn your business into a valuable asset and build a smart business engine that gives you freedom to enjoy the things you love like sipping good bourbon with friends and a low and slow barbecue so if this is you welcome please pour yourself a drink and get comfy let's get to know each other and enjoy the this ride together i'm sure we are going to get along just fine In an earlier episode, we talked about the three F's that are essential for long-term success in business and your happiness and what every business owner should be striving for. So time freedom, money freedom, and mind freedom. And in the last episode, we discussed what real success looks like as part of our first lesson to obtain these three freedoms. In this episode, we are going to be discussing lesson two, which is all about financial freedom, how close you really are and how being financially free is not always dependent on how much money you make or you earn. But before we begin, let's catch up over a drink. I got my bourbon here. Can you hear that sound? Tinkle. That's my ice. I don't think there's a better sound than this. Do you have your bourbon, Luke? I'm right there, little lady. (laughs) So Luke, did you get... Up to anything special over the weekend? Did you cook anything on the weather? Every weekend I'm smoking something. Sometimes it's good, sometimes not so good. But (laughs) what I did this weekend was a new thing. And I used cherry wood and I smoked lamb shanks, which was amazing. Oh, wow. (laughs) I'm not very good at like doing lamb shanks normally. So how do you keep them from getting dry? Because it takes a quite bit of time, hey? Yeah, so... Part of the show is we give you backyard barbecue tips, and that's exactly what they are, right? We're not we're not pit <laughs> masters, although we can yeah. pretend to be. These are backyard tips. I've been I've been using Weber. Weber is my uh, instrument of choice. I've got about seven or eight Webers lying around my house, and every weekend I smoke up some stuff. And uh, these are just little tips and tricks I've learned along the years that hopefully they can help you as you you know, spend some quality time, which is what this show is all about, sipping bourbon, enjoying time with friends and family, and of course, building a business that actually allows you to do what we're talking about. So this weekend, I decided to do lamb shanks for the family because they all love that. But I've never actually done them on the Weber before. And there is a problem Mm. with them drying out because you've got to, you know. So what do you do? So my tip or trick, whatever, tip rather, the first thing you want to do is you want to season lamb, salt, peppers, your base, and if you can put your rosemary, thyme, uh, not, uh, whatever you want is your seasoning. And then you take the lamb shanks, you cook them on indirect, and you smoke them at a low temp of about maybe 130 degrees. And you just want that smoke to infuse for maybe two hours. Mm. So you can use the snake method, if you're familiar with that, or the fuse method. That's an indirect method, and it just slowly burns. And it disallows those lamb shanks to absorb all that smoke over two hours. You want the internal temp of those lamb shanks to reach about 70 degrees. Then what you want to do is stop them drying out. The purpose of smoking them like that is to get the bark, the the smoke and the crust. Mm. Then you chuck it into like a pan, like a a baking pan, whatever. And then you just put some stock, a lot of vegetables, and you can leave it open for another couple of hours, turning them and let that smoke infuse. But what you want to do for the last like hour and a half is you want to seal that thing completely with foil. So while you've got the liquid, you want to turn them, but you want to seal that that pan completely to let those things steam. And that you want, you want those in, when you probe those lamb shanks, they might just fall apart. And the reason you want to let yeah. it, leave it open as long as possible and keep turning them so they don't dry it is you want that smoke infusion. So there you go. It's a little bit of a backyard tip. <laughs> oh, my God. How long did it take you to do? No, there was about you... a six-hour cook. Wow. Wow. It was I, worth oh, you it. sent me the photos. <laughs> yeah. You sent me I've the got photo. a photo. Where, where, so can good. People, where can people see the photo? 
Yeah, let's um let's put them up on we'll put them up on our um Instagram and our Facebook page. You can go check us out at Barbecue Bourbon Business. So that's the same for um Facebook and Instagram. Um I've never tried lamb shanks doing lamb shanks on the web. I'm willing to give it a go. I'm always up for new things, but if you're looking for something different as well um, to do on the Weber this weekend, or if you're just starting out, you want to try something nice and easy, um, hop onto our website. We've got some great recipes there and some video recipes there for you to check out. Um, everyone can have a go. It's really fun to do. I'm still learning. My husband's teaching me. He's the Weber guy. Um, I try and learn something each weekend. We're all about red meat. So I really want to try the, those lamb shanks. I normally do them in a slow cooker. So have no, never no, done no. them on a web arm. Cook, slow cooking <laughs> illegal on this show. It's coals and fire and <laughs> bourbon I and know. chaos. I remember telling you I got a slow cooker and I was like, how do I get the smoke? You're like liquid smoke. I was like, oh no, it's not the same. <laughs> get a new one. <laughs> yeah. Husband, I mean, not a Weber. <laughs> uh, okay, well, now um let's look in, so in the last episode we talked about um when you started business and how you measured success um with like where you lived what car you drive and and so on um but did you wonder how subs- sustainable sustainable that was and how you were going to maintain your financial freedom um you mentioned that you you thought you needed lots of money to have financial freedom and to continue this lifestyle of um of freedom and success um but how do you well, do how do you have financial freedom without having money i guess well, and that's okay. a question we're all waiting to hear yeah and this this is a great question this is this is exactly mm-hmm. the illusion we live in and why so many people are confused stressed and don't know what to do so today's mm-hmm. episode is uh, is exactly what you said what is financial freedom really and and why are you closer than you think we all are so in the last episode i asked you a very, very important question. I suggest if you haven't heard it, please go back. I asked you, why are you really in business? And there's no right or wrong answer, if you remember. Your choice depends on what outcome you really want. And so after burning out and you know, realizing what really mattered to me in my life, after you know, mm-hmm. I've lost my first business, the people that's joining us, my choice was really, really easy. I no longer wanted to chase the illusion of time and money freedom. I wanted to actually really happen. You know, not, not consistently chase the unicorn. But as I mentioned, I struggle with the concept. How can you possibly be financially free if you're not rich? Mm. You really need lots of money to have time freedom. And to make lots of money, surely you need lots of sacrificing and time. And that usually means you know, lots and lots of stress and worry, which is what we are going to be talking about today. What is financial freedom? So to begin this topic and to help you understand I want to ask you a question. So if I asked you right now, how much money do you think you need to be financially free? What would your answer be? So Helena, where can people put all these things, like the, the, the comments? Yeah. It was really long yeah. to know. What We'd love think? to know. So um, get in touch with us on um, our Facebook or Instagram. We'll pop it up. Um, it's at Barbecue Bourbon Business. We'll do a post that you can answer to. We'd love to know. We'd love to know your answers. It's super interesting and in what people think. It is. It's really yeah. important because mm. let me give you some examples. Would your answers be something like this? Five hundred thousand dollars. Mm. Million dollars. Five million dollars. Ten million dollars. And why did you choose that particular number? So maybe your answers went something like this. I can pay off my car loans, my credit cards, my student loans. I can pay off my mortgage. And then I'll have enough money in my savings account to stop living paycheck to paycheck. I'll have enough emergency funds and I can build wealth by investing in real estate and the stock market. Do do these sound familiar? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they do. And you know what? I think a lot of people have that number in mind. And I think that number in mind depends on where you are in life and I guess what what you have to pay for. So I think a lot of people think that being financially free is like having that spare money after they've paid for all the all the bills and have some money left over in the bank for security. And that's that's what they think financial freedom is. And that's how they measure their, measure their financial freedom and, and success and where they are at life. But I think I think that number, which I'm waiting to hear from everyone to what everyone thinks it is, is different for everyone. Like if you think about, hey, if I won the lottery, I, I just want $1 million to pay 
the house off to pay my parents house off or you know just so I can live comfortably and not have to worry about the next thing not to have to worry about um if if I'm in an accident and I and I can't work I think I think that's the thing where that's how people measure financial freedom is like what money they have left over after they've paid for everything and that's I think Mm. very fair and I think Mm. that's what most people 99.9 percent would answer but here's a secret you only need a fraction of these large dollar amounts. All right. So this is critical lesson number two, what this podcast is all about. You are a lot closer to achieving financial independence than you think. You just have to think about this differently. And here's how. Let's say you lived in a caravan and your weekly living costs are $200. Mm. You receive $250 a week in passive income. You are therefore financially free and would have an extra $50 left each week, correct? Correct, yeah. Correct. Now, you would have time and money freedom and a lot less stress in your life. I think if people heard that, like, I only have $50 left in a week, they think that's the stressful part. (laughs) Well, this is the point, right? You've yeah. got to think about this differently. So let's take another yeah. scenario. Mm. You're chasing the wrong things. Yeah. You're going to chase the wrong things. You're going to land up with problems. So let's take another example. If I lived in a $5 million penthouse, had a Ferrari and a helicopter, and you know a couple of mistresses on the side, I had to take care of these aunties. <laughs> and, my weekly, them all. <laughs> and my weekly expenses were $10,000. And you received... $7,000 a week in passive income, you would not be financially free. You would be $3,000 short each week. Correct? Am I making sense? Correct. Yeah. And ensuring your weekly payments are maintained, because if you don't, here comes the, you know, the bank will come and take away the stuff that you think you own that you look fancy to everyone else. They come take it all yeah. away. This means insane stress and worry in your life, your, your stress and, and you know, uh, stress levels be off the roof. So here we have this dude living in a caravan, but he's financially free. The other dude with his mistresses and Ferraris and all that expensive stuff is killing himself to pay off. So this thinking does not make you financially free. A change in thinking does. And so here's something you may want to write down. So financial freedom is not dependent on how much money you earn. It is dependent on whether your income is passive and if your passive income exceeds your expenses. Now, the problem with believing numbers like $1 million, $5 billion, I'm going to win the lotto, Mm. is going to solve all your problems. It's not that these numbers are wrong. Of course, if you landed up with $5 million in the lotto, of course, they're going to solve your problems. But... We're in real life. We're not in Pinocchio land here. What is the reality of you winning a lot of ticket? What is the reality of most people in this world earning $5 million cash out, $10 million cash out, yeah. $2 million? It's just never going to happen, right? The number is just too large. This is the truth. This is real, real, right? Most people will never reach these numbers ever in their life. However, it doesn't mean they can't be financially free. And you're right. Yeah. A lot of people do think that if, you know, they win that big number in the lottery and I know I do as well, that all their problems are going to be solved. And if, and if they could just earn that little bit more per year of their salary, you know, so they can start living their lives and relax a little and, you know, have like, have a little bit of freedom to, to live their lives. They think that that's their solution, but I know, and this is what we're going to, this is what we're talking about in this episode. So how do you how do you get that financial independence without having that big one million five million dollar lottery ticket or or income in your bank account? Well, it starts off obviously as the, what this podcast is shows all about is actually as we learn and go to the journey together is we're teaching you all these strategies. But the first piece is the penny has got to drop. You have mm. to look at this differently. You can't be illusioned by the madness of the world, which is how 99.9% of the world lives. So what you said, so how do you become financially independent if you don't have a million, five million, and you don't have win a lotto ticket? How do you do this? And the answer 
because your business owners on this podcast, that's what says mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. You learn to build the business, you learn to build your business the right way. Your business should be carefully, it is, it should be a carefully designed engine that stops you trading time for money. This is a skill, this is a process. And it should become a valuable asset that sets you up for life. Your business should be a vehicle that creates wealth in your life, independent of your time. Hmm. So how do you do this? Well, this brings us to critical lesson number three. Are you building your business the right way? Or are you setting yourself up for failure like 96% of all businesses, including myself and my partner in our first business, and you just don't know it. Well, thank you for sharing this time with us and thank you for sharing a drink with myself and Luke. Um, We're going to leave you on a cliffhanger there, um, but I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, We really enjoyed it. We are really looking forward to the next episode and being able to talk to you about how to build your business engine. So I hope you take the time to reflect on what you believe real financial freedom means to you. We'd love to hear from you, like I said. So feel free to hop onto our um, Facebook or Instagram at Barbecue Bourbon and Business and let us know that magic number that's going to make you financially free. One million, two million, ten million, um, having that Um, What's that amount in your bank account that's going to make you financially free? I'm looking forward to the next upcoming episode, as I'm sure all of you are. As Luke said, we'll be chatting about the the difference between, you know, being self-employed and being a business owner, having your business work for you, or are you working for your business? You may be shocked that there really is a difference. Um, By the way, if you want to see our cool podcast bars, hop onto our YouTube channel, Barbecue Bourbon and Business Podcast Show to check us out. And if you enjoy this episode, don't forget to leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. And to make sure you don't miss any new episodes, don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, or wherever you prefer to listen to your podcasts. Cheers, everyone. Ka-ching. Ka-ching.